G'day everyone, welcome back to our ODI World Cup playthrough as Australia. We're taking on Sri Lanka today in our ODI game. Now, I would love to win the toss today and actually bat f uh, bowl first because we've had to bat first the last two encounters and we have won the toss. So we are going to chase in this one. Hopefully, gives us a better result after losing the first game, winning the second game, but let's bowl first. Here come the Australian team. Now, my Sri Lankan lineup isn't quite perfect because uh, I am missing, I think, one or two players, perhaps, as they make their way out to the middle. But we're going to do our very best to absolutely see how we go here. It is Australia and Sri Lanka. Mitchell Stark with a new ball. First up, and that's in the air for no run. Edged away. Third man. See that uh, through as they're just getting a couple of runs. Oh, it's in the gap. That is a beautiful shot. And that is four. Shot. More runs. It's in the covers. Or oh, it's Zampa's going to get there. And then you get three runs. That's a good shot. That is away. And that is going to be runs. It's going to go all the way, I think, to the boundary. Oh, that's a good shot as well. That'll be runs. Don't think it'll be chased down. It'll be four again. In the air, and I believe that is going all the way for six. Apart from the six, a pretty good over. None 45. Edge, this is straight to Inglis. Behind the stumps. See you later. Australia get the first through Cummins, who delivers. Kusal Mendes. Joins Nasanka in the middle. Gee, that was so hooping in. Gets it through the gap. That'll be a boundary. The 50 comes up for Sri Lanka after nine overs. Ten overs gone. Sri Lanka one for 51. Cummins to continue. Australia keeping the field as tidy as they can. Almost time for a bit of spin action as well, I think. It's away for another single. Oh, in the air and just over mid-wicket's head. Another boundary. In the air to mid-wicket. Can Maxwell take it? He's got to get to his right. He does. An easy take in the end. One for 69 becomes two for 69. Zampa strikes. Maxwell takes the catch. Oh, there's half a chance of a run out here if Maxwell's quick, which he is. Throw was fantastic. They get the single. Oh, he's come down the wicket and he's got an edge. And that is going to be a boundary. Zampa won't get to that. Or oh, will he? No, he will, actually. He's done a terrific job to get that, uh, keep it to two. Down the wicket again and the same result of a couple of runs. Oh, well batted. Two for 92. Catch! Oh, it was in the air and the reverse sweep is going to be four. It's actually more of a switch hit, wasn't it? Oh, it's in the air. And it's six. Oh, he's come down the wicket. Missed time. Could be a chance, but they'll get the single. Oh, that's in the air. And that is again. Oh, I thought it was going to be six, but it's four. It's a good shot. And after the openers went down, Sri Lanka have done a nice job here at recovering. It's two for one, one, three. Oh, what a delivery from Mitchell Stark. He is an absolute gem of a bowler. This had in swing. It had a bit of an inside edge as well. And the middle stump was dislodged from the ground. It's three for one, one, three. Denania De Silva. To the middle, and oh, again, he went for the in-swinging Yorker Stark. Oh, there's an inside edge here. I don't know where it's gone. It's maybe gone onto the pad. Inglis is trying to get there. He is seeing everything in slow motion. He is the flash. He has the speed. He has the attributes, and he gets himself there. <laughs> Mendes eventually goes. It took about 10 seconds I'm going to take that. He was like a superhero, seeing it in slow-mo. And Inglis takes the catch. Maxwell gets the wicket. Sri Lanka are four for 117. 
And a couple of new batsmen now out in the middle. Oh, the edge. It's going to go to the boundary. That is quality bowling from Maxi. Another edge. Get there. Inglis, he can't take it. Let's have a look here. Since the two wickets fell in the 20th over, there has been, like, not a lot of runs happening. We've done a really good job to actually just bog them down here in this last few overs. And there hasn't been any real, like, majorly expensive ones. The best since that 20th over was the one over that did go for eight runs. But other than that, we've had two four-over runs and the rest pretty quiet. Got him. Shanaka gone. Zampa with the wrong one. Just a little inside edge and hits the top of the stumps. So that is the end of Shanaka. It's five for 136. And Australia, what they've done in this last 10 over period has been exceptional. Oh, it's a wide, but it's almost gone on to hit the stumps. Oh, he's hit that in the air. There's half a chance it's taken, but it's all the way for six. What sort of a score of Sri Lanka looking to achieve here? At the moment, they're on 152 off 29 overs. Oh, that's close. Is it going over the top is the question. The umpire's given it and it's out. That is a big wicket. I would almost think about sending this upstairs. He has not gone for the review. That's the front on spin vision. And a silver out for 26. We will have a look at the ball tracker. What was the height looking like? That was the theory I thought. And it is umpire's call. It was half the ball. Bet half the ball was hitting there. That's huge. Six for 153. Cummins has a couple. That was swinging as well. The ball's still moving quite a lot here in the 30th over. Oh, it's close. I don't think it turns back enough. Six for 161. He's come down the wicket. It's a big edge. Hazelwood's there and he takes the catch. Wall edge gone. Zampa with another wicket. Australia closing in on finishing up this innings. Relatively quick smart. Jeez, how far has he dived for that, Josh? Seven for 163. Oh, that's close. I think it's going down. Seven for 168. Oh, it was in the air. It's a full toss and it's straight to Maxwell. Who's taken it? Cummins gets his third. It's eight for 169. Catch that ball. It was a top edge and they've gone through for one. Oh, comes down the wicket. Has it got enough carry on it? Mitch Marsh, he's standing underneath it. He sees the ball and he sets his sights and takes the catch. And then he throws it over the rope, but we'll ignore that part. It's nine down now. Zampa's got four. Can Sri Lanka get this up over to 200 mark? They're on 199 at the moment. He's come down the wicket and he's absolutely smashed that Karuna Ratney. All the way for six. Nine for 212. Oh, it's in the air and that is more runs. It's another six. So they could get this up to about 250 if Karuna Ratney keeps going the way he does. Oh, and that's in the air and that's more runs and that is six more. Simply extraordinary from the position Sri Lanka were in that they're gonna get above 250 perhaps. All right, I've thrown everyone in the circle on the hope that we get a miscued shot. Oh! Missed the stumps. Oh, mistimed, but it's enough to be over the infield. Four more. That one is possibly a chance. Stark in the deep. He's tall. Can he keep it in? He takes a catch. Sri Lanka all out for 247. Karuna Ratney out for 49. He had a really good innings there, unfortunately for him. Didn't quite make the 50. But it's been a quality batting performance in the end. So that last partnership was really good there for the Sri Lankans. Up to 247. Did a really, really nice job there uh, with especially...
Karuna Ratney making the 49. He was actually the top scorer for the side after they were nine for 187. So a 60 run partnership for the final wicket got them to this score. As for the Aussie bowlers, Zampa had four, Cummins with three, Maxwell two, and Stark with a wicket, while Josh Hazelwood bowled uh, the most economical out of everyone uh, without taking a wicket. So here come the Australians out to bat. It's gonna be Warner and Mitchell Marsh. And uh, if you're wondering why we have a new scoreboard, it's because literally uh, I recorded the first innings last night and I've got the second innings here today and we have had a patch. So we've got uh, a different scoreboard uh, in our first innings to our second innings as um, maybe the patches also provided some additional gameplay changes. I'm not too sure, but the scoreboard is obviously the easiest visual representation of what has occurred. So the target is 248. Australia did end up beating uh, Sri Lanka last night. Let's hope we can replicate uh, similar sort of form to what they've done. That is an inside edge that has uh, not carried through to the keeper. Now, I do need to go hard in the power play because that's what we did last time that was effective. Now, some of these run-ups are really awkward because they charge in super whippy motion and then all of a sudden the ball just slows down in midair. We might need to speed that up a bit. Cut away. Might be two there. No, I think we'll settle with one. I have just upped the visual speed as well a little bit. There we go, there's the boundary. That'll be the first one of the Aussie innings. Mitch Marsh driving it through the covers. Oh, it doesn't get there. I was convinced. We get three. Oh, he's picked that up. And that is all the way for six. Just a whip from Mitch Marsh. Look at that. Oh, just doesn't beat the fielder. It's a single. None for 24 after three. That's all right. It's through the covers. It is racing to the boundary. Edge gone. That's the end of Warner. Finger given. The appeal was so quiet, but it is the end of Mitch Marsh as well, and both openers gone in the over. Very similar dismissals. That one just an outside edge of keeper with a great diving take. Marsh out for 20. It's two for 30. All of a sudden, there's a, a little bit of panic. Top edge. That's four, Marnus. Oh, that's a beauty. See you later, Marnus. Another wicket. Australia have lost three inside two overs. Just a little bit of shape away. Another good catch by the keeper. Labashain out second ball. It's three for 35. Stoinis in at five. Inglis at six is what we have in our batting order. And oh my God, we've lost another. What has happened there? Oh, I'm having an absolute mare. Four for 35. After the openers looked okay. And it's falling apart here. Josh Inglis comes to the middle. A dot to end the over. Wow. Well, I do need to not completely bottle this game here. That would be nice. I mean, really, there's not a huge reason to panic apart from the four wickets down. It's not as if the target is some, like, ridiculous target that we can't chase down. It's literally 250. Yeah, at the moment we're like going, to, it's like four runs and over. So if I can just settle, put together a partnership, we should be okay. Genuinely, there are like a few things that just irritate you about this particular cricket game because they should have fixed them from the last one. Number one, the outfield being an absolute cow paddock in the deep. Just give us quick outfields. If the ball goes to the boundary every time, so be it. But that's realistic. It's what we get most of the time. So fix the cow paddock outfields and also fix the fielders just like slowly getting to the ball. Oh my God, another one down. We lose Steve Smith for 13 and he's five for 47 off 6.4 overs. Like, what is happening? Oh my god, you've got to be taking the absolute piss. Maxwell goes first ball, it's six down. 
I don't think I could have played a worse innings if I've tried here. Six for 47. Yeah, run that. Run yourself out too, Pat. I'm going to keep playing my shots. If it gets me out for 50-odd, I don't care. What has happened in this particular game? To be fair, it's probably realistic of how Australia played at this World Cup. There's another cow paddock outfield. With the ball just slowing to a grinding halt after flying through the infield. <laughs> Seven for 50. <laughs> oh, man. And we are looking at the record books for low scores here. It's extraordinary. I feel like there's something just about the speed of the animation and the speed of the ball coming out of the hand that is not computing in my brain for some reason. And that's why I've obviously had these dreadful innings. So I don't know whether I need to increase the visual speed so it looks like it makes a bit more sense. But there's certainly something about this action that is throwing me completely. Oh, what is that? And in comes the spinner. There's chances here to score runs now. Outfield spread, less pressure on. If that is a direct hit, I would have absolutely lost my brains. Maybe two in it. I, I just think Inglis is too slow to run that two. Well, that might be four. No, there is a man in the deep picking it up, so it's just the two. Another thing that has existed for about four or five years that no one seems to care about is the running between the wickets. Still, it's the tall players who run faster with their stride length. Just make the small people run faster and have more strides. I can't see what's overly complicated about that. And it's that's just the things that I think are annoying a lot of people. It's just there's those little things that have existed for years that they're just seemingly ignoring to fix. Anyway. How have I not been able to pull that shot? Like, that should be a pull shot, that. I still want to smash this to the leg side because there's still a big gap. Got it away. In the gap. Fielder is getting to it, and he's let it, ha he's let it happen. He has. His partnership got to be worth about 20 now, surely. And the score was like 5 for 50. 7 for 50. That's in the air from Mitchell Stark, and that is four runs. Seven for 75. And a single two finish the over, or can we get two? Fielder's a bit slow, we will get two. Seven for 80 after 13. Oh my God, what is happening? Jesus. I've hit it in the air for longer. It is in the gap, and it is going to be a boundary. There's genuinely no batting strategy here. Oh, and an edge that's four. You wouldn't read about it. 15 overs gone. It's seven for 97. This is going to need to be a real Mitch Stark carry job. Inglis is 16 from 19, but I don't know if he's going to win us the game. There was an inside edge there, and that has saved me. Seven for 100. Mitchell Stark, 31. Josh Inglis, 16. Nothing overly fancy about what we've been doing here. Literally just ones. It's a few boundaries. Edged. More runs. Oh, that's broken. That is so broken. That's four. It's the power of Mitchell Stark. Keeping us in this. That is pulled, and I think that's another boundary. Yes, it is. It's honestly just the strut of hit it where the gaps are. Two finishes the over at seven for 117. This partnership is worth 67. Up and over. And a boundary. It's actually not where I wanted it to go. I wanted it to go a bit, uh, a bit more over points, but over cover has done the job. It's a fine. Should be two here for Stark. This will bring up his half century. Which is absolutely extraordinary given the position we was in. We, we were in. Awesome. Mitchell Stark, 50, five boundaries in it, striking 102. It's all around the ground there, as you can see. 
Oh, he's got that away. If he got it finer, it would have been okay. Anyway, we'll come back for two. Oh, he goes up and over third man. That's four. Can't run partnership, eh? What is happening here? And now seven for 152. And Inglis goes up and over again, and that's four again. Seven for 156. It has been half chances, because I'm certainly still playing my shots. Oh, and there's one. The bowling change works. Mitch Stark out for 63. It's eight for 158. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'll take that. Got it up and over the top he has. Oh, the fielder was close, very close. There's also this other huge problem with the batting, which I'm experiencing at the moment, is if you get the timing wrong, the animation plays at like slow-mo speed, right? And this has happened for a number of games. But it's particularly worse here because you then overcorrect because then you try to go earlier because you realize how slow the animation plays. But then they play it even slower when you time it wrong again. So then you're like, okay, well, I gotta go earlier. And then you go even earlier, and it's like, no, is you still early? It's just silly. Anyway, that's an edge that's gone through everyone, and it's probably gonna be two more runs. And that is 50 for Josh Inglis. Oh, 51 balls. There's been five boundaries in it. He is our only chance of winning this game. And now there is a little bit of concern because the quick bowler has come back on and he's the one who's got all the wickets. Edged, gone. There it is. Honestly. Why didn't they just keep him on earlier? I mean, Hazelwood is Hazel good. We've proven that over the years. But not today. Australia all out for 203. Salvaged a game that really should not have been this close after we were seven for 50. We made it to 200. Trilanka absolutely dominating Australia there. We made just 203 from 31.4 overs. Stark, Inglis, your top scorers with 63 apiece on a pitch where no one really dominated. Uh, the spin for Australia took six wickets, whereas the seamers took nine for Sri Lanka. So completely different games uh, across the two innings. Sri Lanka winning by 44 runs in this particular game. It was uh, pretty shambolic for me, I'm not going to lie. And if we go and look at the standings as well for our World Cup series here, this is how it looks. Pakistan is on top. Now, also, these fixtures uh, for the other games don't line up with the real world. So, um, you know, there, there is very little here that actually makes sense comparatively. So you can't really look at the standings and go, how is the real world faring against how this series is faring? Because it's just completely different in the matchups that are recurring. Uh, but everyone has a win, including the Netherlands and Afghanistan in this series. Pakistan, the only side, 3-0. and zero. England, 2-1. and one. New Zealand, 2-1. and one. Bangladesh, 2-1. and one. Everyone else, a win and two losses, including us, Australia. Uh, we have a massive net run rate, considering we are 1-2. and two, But we're still very much in contention to make those final four uh, places for the the uh for the semi-finals so thanks for watching today's video everyone hope you did enjoy apologies if my batting was not very good maybe i'll have to get used to this new patch somewhat uh but until next time i will see you all later goodbye